Well, hi, and thanks for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Air Gun Channel. Today is going to be a quick video. I just want to introduce you to four brand new air rifles. Well, they're not really brand new. They're used air rifles, but they're brand new to me. Uh, I just ordered these guns from two different individuals. I bought two rifles from one person and two from another. Um, and what we have here is a BSA Super Sport Mark II, which is a barrel cocking gun made in England. Uh, next up, we have a BSA Super Sport Mark II carbine, Magnum carbine. This is also made by a BSA out of England. Um, next up, also from England, is a Webley Eclipse, uh, which is kind of a unique gun. I'll show you some of the features on that gun in just a minute. And then finally, we have an RWS Diana Model 50 T01. Uh, which is also quite a unique rifle and um, this is why I bought these is because of some of the unique features that they have now <clears throat> when you buy used guns sometimes you got to be a little careful uh, and there's a perfect example of that sitting on this table uh, and that is this first rifle this is the BSA Super Spark Mark II and the problems with this gun uh, are such that I need to send it back and thankfully the seller is gracious enough to accept it back and uh, I'll, let me explain what's what's going on with the gun. I noticed some galling when I was cocking the gun, some metal to metal grinding. And um, at, on closer inspection, I was able to see that it's actually grinding on the side of the breech block over here. I don't know, you probably can't see that in the camera, uh, but there's some shiny metal right there where the metal has actually been scraping as the gun's being cocked and then the barrel being closed. And I'm wondering why that was happening when I realized that we've got some lateral play that actually I can actually feel. I can take that barrel and move it this way and this way, and I can feel it moving in the breech block. Now, that's a bad thing, because if you have a scope on this gun, with open sights, you probably never notice, because they're on the same plane. They're both on the barrel. But when you have a scope on the gun, the scope mounted on the receiver, and the barrel can move laterally side to side, so you're going to have a change of your point of impact from shot to shot. There's nothing you can do about that. Um, they say you can clamp this in a vise and, and pinch these forks back down on the receiver tube and that should tighten it up. I've got a feeling that somebody tried to do that at some point and maybe that's why the metal's galling. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to try to fix it. I'm just going to send it back to the buyer. I mean the seller and uh, he's going to give me some money back for this gun. But uh, the other problem with the gun is a glaring problem and I didn't discover this until I tried to zero the gun and I went through two different scopes and I ran out of ele elevation adjustment because the gun is shooting so high that the scope can't be adjusted to compensate. Uh, the only way I was able to compensate it was I bought a droop mount which is made for guns that have barrel droop where the barrel tips downward. Um, it just It's common among spring and piston air rifles, barrel cocking guns. To have a little barrel droop usually your scope can compensate for that but in the event that it can't they make a, a special mount that actually kicks the rear end of the scope upward a little bit so that you can um, get that downward elevation adjustment that you're going to need to compensate for the barrel droop so what i did with that mount is i reversed it and that allowed me to kick the front of the scope upward just a bit to compensate for it shooting so high now why would it shoot so high well i put a square on the barrel after removing the rear sight and the barrel is bent it's bent upwards and um, that can only happen one way that I'm, I'm aware of and that's by pulling the trigger when the barrel's cocked and, and in the cocked position not in the return position up here so the barrel swung down you pull the trigger and the barrel flies back up and, and stops when it hits the receiver and the inertia is enough to bend your barrel upward uh, I've seen that a few times in brake barrel air rifles and I just saw it again with this one. So that's got to go back to the seller because there's not much I can do with that gun. And for the money I pay for it, I don't want to invest any more time into it. It's just not worth it. Um, so he's going to give me some of my money back and we have a deal and that's going to work out just fine. The second gun I bought from that gentleman has no issues whatsoever. And that's the BSA uh, carbine, the, the uh, Super Sport carbine. This is a lovely little rifle, not super powerful. It's shooting around 560, 570 feet per second, giving me about 10 and a half foot pounds of energy. But it's just a sweet shooting gun. Both of these guns that I got from that gentleman are fitted with the open gas rams instead of springs, uh, which is nice in a way, but it's not so nice. I'm a spring piston guy, 
and the gas rams aren't too much of a departure from that. You still have a piston, but instead of a steel spring, you've got a gas spring doing the job. So um, in the case of this gun, it shoots so smooth and such a sweet shooting rifle that uh, I'm not going to change anything. I won't put a spring in that gun. I'm going to leave it just the way it is. It has no vibration and just a smooth, fast shot cycle. I really enjoy shooting that gun. So we're going to hang on to that one. That's a, that's a score. I really like it. Uh, the Beeman Webley Eclipse. Well, it's not a Beeman, I'm sorry. Beeman did import these, but uh, this one's not imported by Beeman. This is just a standard Webley Eclipse from England. This is a underlever rifle that's cocked by uh, using these little latch up here. Push that forward, that releases the, the lever, and then you pull the lever all the way down until the sear engages, and that cocks the rifle. From there, you need to load a pellet, and that's done at this loading gate right here. You push this lever forward, that lifts a loading gate, and that gives you direct access to the rear of the barrel where you can insert your pellet, and then you just bring the loading gate down and give it a push, and it locks back into position. That's a kind of a cool gun, but just the way it loads like that, that's one of the reasons I purchased it. Um, so it's just a sweet rifle. It's very accurate, but it's got that Webley trigger, which um, people that have been around Webley guns will know what I'm talking about. It's not the nicest trigger on the market, it's a very stiff, very heavy trigger with a little bit of creep. Um, I'm going to see what I can do about that. Maybe we'll do a video on correcting that trigger or at least trying to smooth it out a little bit. But um, we're going to do a video on each of these guns where we uh, will do a chronograph video where we chronograph it. We'll do an accuracy test on each one and uh, we'll discuss the various features and go over the guns in a little more detail. Last up on the table today is a RWS Diana model 50 T01 and this is kind of cool with its um, three-quarter length stock it's also an under lever when I mean, you push a little button on the forward end of the lever and that releases it so now you can cock the gun very similar to the way you cock the Webley uh, but the loading system is different this has a loading tap and a loading tap is a rotating um, sleeve within the gun that when you rotate it forward it allows you to drop a pellet into the tap from the, the hole in the receiver here and then when you rotate it back again, it brings that pellet in line with the barrel. Now, in theory, there could be an accuracy issue when you do that because that pellet has to make the jump from the tap to the rifling of the barrel. But so far, it doesn't seem to have affected the accuracy that much. This gun shoots pretty good. So at any rate, I just wanted to introduce you folks to these new guns. The BSA Super Sport Magnum Carbine, the Webley Eclipse, and the RWS Model 50 T01. So stick around, folks. We're going to do some videos and get you more acquainted to these guns. And uh, by all means, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Hit the bell to be reminded when those videos do come out. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. That would be a big help to my channel. Thanks so much, folks. Thanks for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Air Gun channel. You have yourselves a great day. Oh, I almost forgot. I was about to walk away when I remembered we have to ring the bell. We're going to use this BSA Super Sport Magnum. This is 22 caliber. All the other guns that I showed you today are 177 caliber. So this one's a thumper. Let's see if we can't ring that bell from here. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, thanks again, folks, for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Airgun channel. Have a great day.